What's up guys, it's Mike, and welcome to my first video on this channel. And basically, what I'm going to do on this channel is just teach you guys the Lua language, and maybe even get into some more coding, uh, different coding languages, but for, we're just going to start off with Lua. I, I am using ComputerCraft, because it offers a Lua compiler, and I find it to be the easiest um, uh, in compiling Lua code. And, you know, I, I like playing Minecraft too, so I guess it combines both the elements. Although I won't be doing anything else besides coding on computer craft, so there's that. You can use what I'm going to teach you for anything. Doesn't It isn't just for computer craft, it isn't um, just for uh, Minecraft, it's for the entire Lua language. Um, I can list some titles that were coded in Lua, World of Warcraft is in Lua. Um, not sure if Diablo was. Might have been. Um, not too sure on that one, though. But anyway, um, so basically what the series is going to do is it's going to teach you the language of Lua. You do not need to have any kind of background in programming, any kind of background in Lua at all whatsoever. And I'm hoping to give you some knowledge on it, and maybe you can go on and code some really awesome programs like ComputerCraft, or maybe even eventually make a game of your own. So, um... Let's go ahead and jump right in here. So I am coding on an advanced computer, which is this yellow one here, advanced computer. And um, that just offers the, it, it just tells you the line number that you're on and it offers color changing, so stuff like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new program. I'm gonna call it TUT, just for short for tutorial. And we're gonna jump right in here. So as you can see here in Lua, we have this is blank thing, just this blank, um, this blank uh, panel that we can just code on. And you just type random, random stuff here. And there you go. So now, we, now we're ready to uh, start some coding. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna teach you guys is how to make actual uh, output on the screen of whatever you'd like to say. And to do that, there's a function for it called print. And it looks just like this. That is a print function. But inside the parentheses is what you want to type, and you're going to go ahead and you're going to type a in quotation mark, whatever the heck you want to say. I'll just do the infamous hello world. Hello world. Oops, not, did not spell that right. There we go, hello world. And you have to close the quotation marks, and once that happens, this will turn red, or whatever your compiler wants to turn it. It doesn't, might not even turn it a color. And then enter with the parentheses. And then I'm going to save it and run the program. And it's going to say, hello world. So basically, that's what it's saying. Print, and then whatever the heck you want to say in here. And you could do that multiple times. Print, hi, just like that. And I go ahead and do tutorial, hello world, hi. So that's basically just how to make an output on the screen. So the next thing I want to show you guys is jumping into a little bit of variables. Um, the print stuff, actually, let me go over a couple more cool print stuff. So if we want to do some, if we want to, uh, do some slow printing, as you could, as you saw there when I ran it before, the text just appeared on the screen. If I type this here, text, utils, I think that's short for utilities, dot, uh, dot slow print with a capital P, and then just like what we typed before, hello world, like that. And we go ahead and run that. It's going to kind of do like a, um, kind of like a animated type of text. It goes from left to right and just uh, doesn't just make it all appear at once. It uh, kind of animates it a little bit. So there's that. There's also a way to do repetition in printing. We could do like, we, uh, this is how you do it. Print, open two parentheses, and then in the quotation marks, whatever the heck you want to type. I'll just type hello, and then uh, I have a space here because if I'm repeating it, um, then it's going to it's going to have a space there. I don't want it to, the words all to be jumbled, and I'll show you why. It'll make more sense when I run it. So then I'm going to do colon rep, and then in parentheses again, I'm going to do how many times. I'll repeat this ten times, end parentheses, and then end parentheses again. So now if I run this. It's just going to repeat hello 10 times, just like that. And if I didn't have the space here, and I just had it hello, uh, it would 
be very jumbled here. You need the space to you can actually uh, see um, see that the words are separated. So that yeah, that's just a lot of the types of printing. So now let's like I said before get into variables. So I'm just gonna do basic variable just like you'd see in algebra class or um, just stuff like that. X equals ten for say. Oh, let's do five. Why not? Okay, so there's x equals 5. Now what this is doing is it's assigning the va uh, the value of 5 to the to the variable x. And you could actually print variables, which is pretty cool. So print, but this actually doesn't take quotation marks. If you did like this, print x in quotation marks, it would just print the letter x. If you wanted to print the variable x, just print x with no quotation marks. And if we go ahead and run this, it's going to print 5 because as you can see, it's printing the value of x, which is 5. There's also different types of variables, such as strings, which is uh, just a array of letters. Um, so I could do x is hello. So if I go ahead and run this, it's going to say hello because it's printing x. It's printing the value of x, and the value of x is hello. So another thing you could do is you can combine um, you, c you can combine things into um, into one print function. So let's make x5 again. And then we could say uh, the value of x is, now we're going to go ahead and end the quotation marks, and then there's a thing that separates, uh, let me just type it, it'd be easier like that. So this is what it's going to do, and I'll show you uh, everything in that. So it's going to say the value of x is 5. So it's saying the value of x is, and then it's going to print the x. And I have this comma here, because it's telling us that we just, okay, now we're done with, um, with uh, what we're actually printing, and then we're going to go ahead and print a variable. This can also be done with two dots. Uh, I've seen that a lot too. Um, if I go ahead and run that, it's still going to work. But if I don't have anything at all, it's going to return an error. So if I run that, it just gives us this big error message here. Uh, either the comma or the dots will work. I personally like the comma better because um, you know it's just one thing rather than two. So uh, I'm going to be using that, but either one is fine. Now, if you are actually familiar with other languages, such as uh, C, Java, C++, Objective-C, they all use these things, semicolons, just like that. In Lua, semicolons are optional. If I type, if I run the program with the semicolons, it's still going to work, but they're also going to work without it. They're optional. And uh, I personally don't like using them if they're optional. But if you want to use the semicolons, feel free to do so. Feel free to do so because it is perfectly fine with them. So there's that. Um, you can also do basic math with the with the variables. So if I do x is five plus five, and run that, it's going to this value of x is ten because five plus five is ten. I could also do multiplication and division five times, and the value of times, I mean the uh, symbol for multiplication is the asterisk. 5 times 4 for say, and that's going to be 20 because 5 times 4 is 20. And the symbol for division is the slash. I'm going to get a big decimal here. Yeah, not that big. 1.25. Um, so yeah, that's assigning the value of 5 divided by 4 to x. So that's basically it for uh, variables and printing. It's really, really simple. Uh, all you're doing is saying giving the uh, giving this value to the x. And you don't want to have it the other way around. You don't want to say 5 equals x because it's going to return an error here. It's going to say like a uh, big error message because x has never been defined. 5 can actually be a variable. And you could say, actually, I'm not sure about that. Scratch, scratch what I just said. But uh, the variable that you're defining has to come first. It has to. Otherwise, it's going to return to error like you saw. So there's that. Um, we can also do multiple variables. Um, for example, x equals 5 and y equals 3, let's say. And we'll do print uh, the value of x is comma x, print the value of y is comma y, and then it's going to go ahead and print that. You can have multiple variables. Oh, I forgot to space it. See, I did not space it here, and now it should be fine. 
But um, you can also do the variables don't have to be one letter. They can be multiple letters or numbers, actually, for that for that matter. It could be um, it could be Mike, your name. Why not? That's my name, actually. And um, the value of uh, the value of x, I should put the value of Mike is five. But um, just as long as you keep it consistent, these can contain anything, such as letters. I could do numbers, but it just has to be kept consistent. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, the next thing that I want to go over is if statements. Now, once once we've learned if statements, uh, you can do quite a lot of things like making programs with just what we've learned now from printing and if statements. That's really really all there's uh, really a lot um, you could really do a lot with it so I'm gonna go ahead and type in x equals 5 now I'm gonna make an if statement now I'm gonna show you guys the structure of the if statement it's gonna go if condition uh, then statements and so this is a very basic if statement it's gonna now the computer is gonna go through this code and it's gonna say if this condition is true, then we're going to run what these statements are. If it's not true, if this condition is false, then it's just going to skip right over it. Uh, and it would go to the next thing. We don't actually have something else, so the program would just end. So, in the end is just to um, say that this if statement is concluded, and we're ready to move on to the next thing. If you don't have the end, it's going to return an error. So, the condition I'm going to put in is x equals equals 5. And I'll show you why I have two equals after this. And so basically this is saying if x is equal to 5, then we're going to do print x is x is 5, just like that. So now if I go ahead and run this, it's going to say x is 5, because that is true, x is equal to 5. Now, you might be wondering why I have two equals here. If I didn't, it would actually cause an error. You can see here I have this big error thing there, um, and I'll show you why. Because equals equals is actually a Boolean operator, and that sounds really weird, I know. Um, it's spelled like this, um, Boolean, just like that. You may have seen this if you code in C++ or C, or uh, Objective-C, because you can define variables that are Booleans. But uh, here, a Boolean is just basically returning true or false. If x is equal to 5, basically saying, uh, it's 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 comparing. It, these are this is a comparing statement. It's comparing x to five, so x is equal to five. There's you can also do this. X is not equal to five. Uh, no, that's C plus plus. Sorry. Uh, you would do the little tilde symbol uh, equal to, which is saying if x is not equal to five, then you could do that. You can also do less than if x is less than five. If x is greater than five. If x is less than or equal to five. If x is greater than or equal to five. All of that would work. But when you only have one equal, that's a, that's an assignment. You're assigning this to this. You're assigning the value of this to your variable. And you're saying, if we're going to assign this to this, then print. it's not going to work. The computer's going to be very confused by that. So you need the equals equals or any of those operators that I just showed you. And that is why we have two equals. So that's why, that's why it went through, because it checked. So it was going along, okay, 5 is equal to, or x is equal to 5. Now we're going to go through this, oh, there's an if statement here. And the condition is x equals equals 5. Let me check back, oh, that is true. So we're going to go ahead and do the statement, and it said x equals 5. But let's say I changed x to 6, and I go ahead and ran that. It wouldn't say anything, because it checked our condition, and since the condition is not true, it just skipped right over the whole thing. So there's the if statement. You could also get a little bit more, um... A little bit more advanced with the if statements by putting in this thing, else if condition, then statements, and this is called an if else if statement. And basically, what this is saying is, let's go ahead and actually put in this condition here: x equals equals six, and our statements are going to be print x is six, just like that. So basically, if this is not true, if the if statement is not is not true, it's going to go to the next one. It's going to go to the else if statement, x equals 6. 
and it's going to check that. And basically what an else if statement is, it can check multiple things. So it's, it's gonna, first it's going to check if x is equal to 5. If it is, then it's going to do this, and it's going to go to the next one. It's going to go to our next little bit of code down here. If this isn't true, then it's going to go to our else if statement, x equals equals 6. Now you can do this as well, um, if just like that, and then put an end here, separating it into two if statements. But, you know, just to save time and space, um, you can put the else if statement and combine it all into one. And then, of course, you need an end here. So now if I run this here, it's going to say x is 6, because uh, since x is equal to it's going to go first to the if statement, the original one, x is equal to 5. Okay, that's not true. We're going to go to the next one, the else if statement. x is equal to 6. Oh, that's true. Let's do these statements here. And it printed x is 6. And you can actually have as many else if statements in the in the if statement as you want to. So we could do else if x equals equals 7, then print x is 7. You can have as many of these as you want to. Um, and you always have to end it with an n. So um, just as many as you want to. Uh, you can have an infinite amount of these. The next thing I want to show you guys is the else statement. Else does not need a condition, it just needs statements. And I'll show you why. Print x is not 5, 6, or 7. Uh, and these or, not and or are actually operators too, but um, I, we once you, once you put quotations around it, it just turns into text. Don't worry about that. And I'll show you why else does not need an if uh, condition, rather, because it's going to check the if statement first. Okay, this is not true. Or let's actually put this as 8. So x is equal to 8. Okay, x is not equal to 5. Let's go to this one. x is not equal to 6. Let's go to this one. x is not equal to 7. Okay, now we're at the else statement. If this, if none of this proceeding, preceding it is true, then it's just going to run the else statement no matter what. But if one of these is true, it's going to skip over the else statement. So now it's going to run, if I do this, it's going to run x is not 5, 6, or 7, because it it uh, went through this one, not true, not true, not true. Okay, here's our else statement, let's go ahead and run it. And that's basically as complicated as if statements can get. That's really all there is to it. So that's that's basically all I'm going to cover for this episode, uh, this tutorial, the first one. And I'm going to run a pretty basic program on... Um, on just using what we've learned today. So I'm going to go ahead and call, define, uh, declare a variable x is 5 and y is 3, why not? And you see I'm only using one of these because it's an assignment. Um, and if x is equal, to, is equal to y, then print x is equal to y else print x is not equal to y. And there we go. So now it's going to compare x and y. And it's going to say x is not equal to y because x is 5 and y is 3. But if I, however, if I made x, x 5 and y 5, it's going to say x is equal to 4. x is equal to y because they're both the same thing. So that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching this episode. And as always, uh, just something I like to do, I put a quiz question down in the description. And I will post and I will tell you guys the answer in the next episode. So go ahead and feel free to answer it in the comment section below. And um, just good practice, I guess. Uh, just completely from what we've learned in the video. And if you guys have any questions about this, like you didn't understand something, or maybe I didn't explain something too clearly, or I skipped over something, uh, go ahead and leave a question down in the comment section below. I check my comments daily, and I will be very happy to answer your question and give you a response almost immediately. So, um, yeah, that's about it. I will see you guys next time. This is Mike. And this is signing off. Thanks so much for watching.